Alright, so in this video I'm going to be looking at forces and moving up to the condition where we have forces in equilibrium. So we're going to look at things like combining vectors and resolving things into perpendicular components as well. So let's pick a starting point. So let's check we know the definitions of um, different things. So a vector is a physical quantity with magnitude and direction, whereas scalar only has magnitude. And the other thing, we're going to talk about equilibrium later. So an equilibrium condition is when there's no resultant force acting on an object, or the resultant force is zero. When we move on to the next topic of moments, we'll modify this definition slightly, but this will suffice for what we're looking at at the moment. So let's quickly look at some examples of these things. So um, vectors, some that you come across. So forces are an example of a... Um, vector, you'll also come across um, acceleration as a vector, and you'll come across like velocity and um, displacement. All are um, vector quantities. Then, in terms of scalars, you have things like um, speed or distance. Again, they don't they have magnitude, but you don't have direction, so those make those scalars. Okay, so those are your examples. So let's look at how we can apply this vector knowledge to forces. Um, so what we're going to look at doing in this section is calculating the magnitude of a resultant and the angle of a resultant. Um, and a resultant is essentially formed by combining several forces together to find out what the overall impact is. So we've got a car sitting on a road, it experiences a force due north of 10 and, and 20 newtons due east. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So whenever you're doing questions like this, the first thing you should always be doing is drawing um, some diagrams. Let's represent the car as a box. So we've got a force due north at 10 newtons, and we also have one to the east, 20 newtons. So when it calculates, when it says calculate the resultant, what we're essentially looking to do is what is the overall force that we could put in there to represent those two forces. So the first thing you have to do is arrange your vectors or force vectors tip to tail. So we've got your 20 newtons that way, and then your 10 newtons that way. So you can see um, here the tip of the 20 is paired up with the tail of the 10, and then the resultant is would be formed by closing the triangle. So the key things here, because north is perpendicular to east, we have formed a right angle triangle in there. And let's, for the purposes of this, call this angle in here theta, because one of the things we're going to look to do is calculate the direction. And we're going to do that by stating the angle um, to the east direction here. So I'm going to call that theta. Okay, so what we can do is apply um, some Pythagoras theorem to this, and the one I'm referring to is this one. So if we want to calculate, in this case, the resultant squared, we would do 10 squared plus 20 squared, which is 500. So that means the resultant is going to be square root. 500, which let's calculate now, which is 22.36 yada yada yada, which is going to be 22 newtons, two, two significant figures. So that there is the magnitude. So let's look at calculating theta as well. So if that is a right angle triangle, Let's use some of our identities. So we're going to pick tan theta because we know two of the sides. Uh, so we know that tan theta using SOHCAHTOA is your opposite over your adjacent, um, which in this case is opposite is 10 divided by 20, so it's a half. So that means that we can get theta by doing the inverse tan operation on a half. And if you do that, so let's calculate that now, we get a angle of 26.56 yada yada yada, 
which is going to be 27 degrees to two significant figures. So what we've got is by drawing the diagram we can show exactly what direction it's travelling in. So we've got this angle of theta and we've also managed to get the magnitude of r which is essentially we could get rid of those two separate and replace it with this one here. Okay, so that is when we've got um, our two vectors being perpendicular to each other so they form a nice right angle triangle. So that's a nice simple example. So let's up the difficulty a little bit. So instead, what we've got, we're going to look in this one is actually resolving vectors into perpendicular components because we've got some vectors that are not perpendicular to each other initially. So we've got a ball sitting on a table. It experiences a 5 newton force at 30 degrees to the vertical. So let's sketch this as we go. So we've got a ball. There is the vertical. It's a bit rough, but there we go. Uh, and we've got a force and that's 30 and we've got a force of 10 where that in there is 50 degrees and you want to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant force so let's try what we had before so let's put them tip to tail like this and then we've got our resultant force, so that was our 10, and that was 5. So the immediate problem we've got here is this is no longer a right angle triangle, so we can't use Pythagoras theorem to solve this and find the resultant, which is a bit annoying. So a side note here, you could in fact use the cosine rule and work out what some of these angles are, so that's one possible way you'll do it, and you'll learn about the cosine rule in A-level maths. But the way we're going to learn to do it is actually by finding the perpendicular components of these two vectors and then combining them together. So if we look first at the 10 newton force, so let's map that on there. What we want to do is essentially find the, um, let's call this the horizontal direction and this the vertical direction, and then put our angle in there. What we want to do is find the component in this direction and the component in this direction, so the horizontal and the vertical components. Um, so if we dot a line in there, because we've got a right angle triangle, so if we do a bit again, so we've got 40 degrees in there. So. If we want the component of 10 in the horizontal direction, it would be 10 times by cosine of 40. And if we want it in the vertical direction, it would be 10 cosine 50. Or you um, could actually write this as uh, 10 sine 40, if both of those are the same thing. And if we map it out for the... 5 newton force as well. We've got an angle of 30 in here, which means we have an angle of 60 in here. So then this is, a, is going to be 5 cosine of 60, and then this one would be 5 sine 60 or 5 cosine 30, and those take the same values. So we've got the vertical components of both and the horizontal components of both. So if we want to find the horizontal component of the resultant, it would be the horizontal component of the 10 plus the horizontal component of the <coughs> of, of the other one, 5. And we can find the vertical component of it by doing... 10 sine 40, so let's stick to the um, 5 sine 60, like that. So we can find the, the resultant by doing this, 
which comes out as a number, which I'll calculate in a second. And we can also get the angle of the resultant to, let's say, the, um, the horizontal in this direction. So we can get um, theta will be inverse tan of the vertical component over the horizontal component. So let's calculate both of those. And this one comes out at 15 newtons when you do it to the correct number of significant figures. And we get, when we give it to the right number of significant figures, 47 degrees to the horizontal. It would have been perfectly valid to give the angle to the vertical as well, which would have been 90 minus this answer. As long as you show either on a diagram or explain in words which angle you're giving, either is completely fine. So that's how we can resolve a vector into perpendicular components. The resolving is this part here where we went, okay, we've got 10 newtons this way, the horizontal component is this much and the vertical component is this much. So that's the process of resolving. And if you see a question that asks you to do that, that's what it's asking you to do. And then this part here, we're finding the magnitude of the resultant of these two and we can find the angle as well. So the same skills we were learning about in the previous question. So let's up the difficulty one more time to something quite interesting. So we're going to look at the condition of equilibrium. So at the beginning we said that's when the resultant force is zero and we often use this principle to find some unknowns. So what we've got, we've got a block here and it's just being suspended using two wires at different angles. So let's put a wire in here and we've got that at 30 degrees. We've got another wire at 60 degrees. And we've got different tensions in both. So a tension is essentially a force in a wire like this. And then we've got the weight force down here of 200 newtons. And it wants us to calculate what T1 and T2 are in terms of this. So in order for this to be in equilibrium, the resultant force has to be zero. And it has to be zero in all directions. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the vertical direction and we're going to look at the horizontal direction and the resultant force should be zero in those two directions. I could have picked um, two other directions so as long as they're perpendicular and you show the resultant zero in two perpendicular um, directions that works and this is my preferred mode of reference. We could have done it so looked in the planes of T2 and T1 for instance um, but this is just my preferred way of doing it. Um, so if we look in the horizontal direction and look at the forces that are acting that way, so we've got T1, uh, in the horizontal direction it would T1 sine 30, but that would be acting to the left, which is in the opposite direction to the way we're going to define as positive, so that's going to be a negative force. Sixty, and then if we map this out, that's going to be ninety degrees. So then you'd be doing two hundred um, cosine of ninety in there, which is zero. So that is not going to have a force in the horizontal component. So if we do that, um, sine of thirty is one of the um, very nice trigonometric identities. It gives it um, a half, so that's where that goes. And let's move that over to the other side. I forgot to write in there that if it's going to be in equilibrium, the resultant force of this must be zero. Then we move the T1 sine 30 to the other side, and then we get sine 60. So um, sine of 60 is another um, useful trigonometric identity. Entity. Sine of 60 is calculated by doing root 3 over 2. Um, you don't have to know that, but it's useful if you do. So we can get T1 is essentially root 3 T2, because you've taken the root 3 over 2 and you multiply by 2. 
and then if we look in the vertical we know that T1 cosine of 30 we defined the positive as up so that's in the correct direction plus T2 cosine 60 and then against that 200 and we know that's going to be 0 um, so cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2 um, cosine of 60 is a half so let's put those in Uh, plus t2 over 2 is equal to 200. So what if we look here, what we've got essentially are two equations with two unknowns, so we can solve that. So let's substitute in um, root 3 t2 t1. So you'd end up with root 3 multiplied by root 3 gives you 3. So you get 3 over 2. So you're gonna so we're gonna put 1 into 2, which would give you 3 over 2 plus, plus a half, all multiplied by t2 equals 200. Let's scroll down a little bit. Um, which means that t2 equals Uh, 100 newtons and then we put that into the uh, equa equation 1 so 100 times by root 3 gives you 173.2 dot, 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 dot newtons um, so let's give these in appropriate sig fig form 1.0 times 10 to the 2 and T1 is 1.7 times 10 to the 2 newtons, giving them the appropriate number of seven figures, which is 2 in this case. Okay, so what we've done here is we use the principle of equilibrium. So using, if the resultant force is 0, here, what we're doing, that's why this is equal to 0, that says this is equal to 0. We're calculating the resultant force in the horizontal direction, and remembering the signs are important for directions and when those are all added together we should get zero same thing here all of the forces in the vertical direction added together should be equal to zero and then we just move things around to get our unknowns we had two unknowns in this top one which is why we needed two directions the horizontal and the vertical gave us two equations like this which we solve simultaneously to find out essentially what each of the tensions are in the wires. So just to recap the, what you should have got out of this, so from the initial section you should now be able to define vector scales in equilibrium and give some examples of them. Uh, in the first example you saw how we can combine two perpendicular vectors together which I then put into the second question again and this third question as well. Resolving, so that's where we get telling this first, we're finding the component in the horizontal direction or the component in the vertical direction. And then in here, putting those all together in an equilibrium condition, so actually saying what, when the resultant force is zero, we can use that to find things. And that's the end of this video.